Hello, everyone, and warm welcome to today's Godlet Life conversation. My name is Taina Maria Chara, and I am your host on this channel. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming my beautiful sister in Christ, Hadassa Dav from Canada, uh, to share her testimony uh, regarding how God paints through her. And, uh, you know, she's an artist who has known the Lord since she was nine years old and has been walking closely with him through her whole life. So uh, welcome, Hadassa. So lovely to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I'm yes, lovely that you are here. Uh, let's start with your story of uh, what happened when you were about five years old, uh, a little child, and what happened in your life and how you get get to know, got to know the Lord and started to walk alongside him. And then, uh, then we can continue yes. towards your work as an artist. Sounds great. Well, around the age of five, um, I went through... Um, a time of trouble, and that was my parents got divorced. Um, and in that time as well, my brother, my younger brother, um, was hit by a car, and I witnessed it. So I had two things that I was dealing with that were very traumatic at a young age. And in that time is when the Lord drew very close to me and wrapped his arms around me, and I felt this presence and got to know that presence and come to know him in a mighty powerful way that I didn't see the trauma around me, the pain that most people probably would feel and, and their lives would change to a different direction in a wrong direction. It actually brought me closer to him, to that love that he was giving me. And so during that time, I was just getting to know him, but it wasn't until the age of nine that I gave gave heart to the Lord completely and was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I can remember speaking in tongues and the pastor saying, oh my goodness, the child speaking in tongues. But yes, it was the witness of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And, and then from there on, I learned to walk with him and see him and everything, everything you around. He's around us. So I can still have, I still have memories of rainbows and, and the feeling of the sun which shone through the rain and his presence in that. And, um, I mean, the Lord is around us all the time. It's, it's that childlike heartness, you know, that faith that he longs us to keep and never lose. And um, I had a favorite rock I used to go to, and I would talk with him on that rock and um, have many conversations. But I always had him with me, always. And, and that was the beginning of hearing him and knowing him in a greater way that he was my father, that he loved me. and he was taking good care of me. And, and I knew that. I had that sense that I was in good hands with him. Oh, that you know, is, and then, yeah. That sounds so comforting for you when you were this little child who had experienced this traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And as you, mm -hmm. as you said, when that happens, I believe that God uses those situations to draw closer to us. But it is yes. up to us to decide if we allow that to happen. And if we don't allow, then we can drift to the to the wrong way, as you also yes. indicated. So what yes. I would be very interested in um, in hearing about this time of your life is uh, it sounds like it was very much a walk, just you and the father, just you and your father, your your mm -hmm. your private personal walk with him. So mm -hmm. were your parents or any uh, uh, church family uh, involved in that process at all? Or was it just you and him somewhere in nature? Or How'd Well, you're right. It was just him and I. Um, I was, I'm the eldest of my family. My mother had remarried and she had um, a child with another two children. And her life was consumed with that, but also the caring of my brother who had to be retrained, retaught again, everything. Yeah. And so you think of my mother, she went through also a feeling of trauma of every of divorce, her, her son. Um, and she almost lost her daughter uh, in the hospital because of 
of uh, complications during the same time as my brother. It was just a whole uh, tsunami of things. Yeah. And so I'm be being the eldest, I was quite mature for my age. So I had to grow up fast. And um, I guess that strength of my that strength I had, I never really had my mother was there, but she wasn't the one that mentored me. Mm. Um, but I loved going to church. She when she um divorced, she ended up going to a Pentecostal church. Yeah. And that's how I became to know the Lord. So I went to Sunday school and I couldn't get enough of church. A lot of kids just don't want to go. I couldn't wait to go Wednesday. Yeah. I couldn't wait to go on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Any camp meeting. I was there. I yeah. just couldn't get enough of it. I loved going to church. Yeah. And I loved hearing the stories. And I loved the praise and worship. And uh, I just loved church. <laughs> so my strength came in that. The Lord just, his joy, his joy, his love, and the people around me. Um, and, I, and I just had that never feeling of loneliness it's always a feeling of love and family around the people within the church and so it, it, they all fed they all there's all like the integral feeding and um i have to say that it was a whole bunch of people in general just the love of christians in general the the church i grew up in it was a very loving church that accepted no matter if you had purple hair tattoos they would embrace you and love on you and um, Holy Ghost, spirit filled, and uh, it's one thing I hope to see more in the g generation that we're living in now. You know that we're not seeing that embracing people, and uh, I'm really hoping that will soon change. Yeah, me too. So sounds mm -hmm. like you have you have been very very much blessed for having that environment in spite of all those, mm -hmm. or maybe because of those traumatic experiences, yes. because in most stories yeah. that are some similar, people drift off into alcohol or drugs or violence or yes. despair or anxiety and depression. So praise yeah. the Lord that he has blessed you and your family in that way that you have been surrounded yeah. by your lovely church family. And also regarding what you are sharing about your church family, um, mm -hmm. I am def definitely not an expert about this, but I my assumption would be that that is mm -hmm. that was also rare. Maybe it's even today quite rare to have that kind of a congregation because so many yes. have been more of a, like religious minded by the mm -hmm. religious spirit, which is judgmental and uh, you know all these prejudices. So what a mm -hmm. what a what a huge blessing from the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Well, church should be a community, and mm -hmm. we would come to each other's houses, and they we have pies and have dinners, and we get together after church, and um, everyone worked together, and you know, Jesus is about Yeshua is about community, you know, no walls, and we all help one another, and we all work together in that fellowship, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what we really need. We don't yeah. need uh, division in any way. We keep people yeah. in groups. Not groups. We are all one. We're not separated in different groups from the least to the, you know, to the best. It's, it's not that way. We are to be all in one level because Jesus sees us like that. You see, he sees him as he sees all as one. We're not better than anyone else. Yes. You know? And I love what you say yes. about that there, there are no walls because uh yes. often the churches it's just like they think it's just what happens in that building or within that building mm -hmm. but what you were sharing mm -hmm. you know the real community meeting at mm -hmm. home house house churches house congregations sharing yes. life together and yes. uh, that yes. i believe that is how we are naturally meant to live in a community yes mm. yes yes so how did your life then unfold from that when you um, approach your teenage years and your young adulthood? And uh, when did this mm -hmm. art, uh, this is obviously a big oh. gift from the Lord, a, a talent for yeah. you from the Lord. So how, when did you start discovering that and what happened on that, on that side of your life? 
Well, art has always been an outlet for me. That's the gift the Lord gave me too. So as a child, I had a gift for art and I would just, um, you know, dive into it and just be quiet. Just my mind would ease my mind to paint in colors. I love everything colorful. I've always loved color. If you look at my work, it's just color and I can't get away from it. Even when I try to subdue it, yeah. it's like I can't. But God's full of color. He said, heaven, the flowers are more colorful than the flowers that are here. So I always think, Lord, you're giving me these wonderful colors. Oh. But as I grew into my teenage years, you know, I, we all go, you know, to the other side of the fence. We're kind of on the borderline of the fence where we want to, I wasn't going to church as much. And my, you know, things changed and going to high school and meeting friends. But I always had the Lord on my, right with me, uh, always telling me, you know, uh, don't go this way. Don't go that way. You know, and he kept me on a secure line where I wasn't bothered by peer pressure. Yeah. Thank the Lord, because I was able to walk away where my friends couldn't understand it and they didn't walk. In. I kept them out of trouble, but because the Lord so. kept me out of trouble. But he gave me that conviction in my heart. Because he and knew you... there was a plan for my life. Yeah. And he was not going to let nothing take me away from it. Amen. So. Yeah. And you, so, you okay. listened to her, him and you obeyed him throughout Even all though, that time. Yeah, I want to do my own thing. I still listened to him. Yes. I still obeyed him. I still talked to him because he was always there. There's always a part that you know he's there. Mm. Always. You know, that's why he says, his hand's not too short. You're not far from me. Your hand, I'll not let you go. His hand's always there to grab us. He's not going to let us go once he has us. So as I aggressed into my teenage years and adulthood, um, I was actually born in Sudbury, which is about um, four hours from Toronto, not too far. But I ended up leaving Sudbury at the age of 18. And I went on my own, and I said, this is where my faith was just radical. And I said, Lord, um, where do you want to take me? And I got on a bus, and I came to Toronto. And I asked him, take me where you want me to go. And I followed that lead. And um, I end up uh, working in Toronto, getting a job that the Lord just gave me completely, uh, supernaturally gave me. And at the time, I mean, I was very young at the time. Um, and uh, I said, because I worked part-time going to school, I was working part-time in a pizza place. I said, Lord, I am not going to work in a fast food place. I want retail right now for now until I get myself established in what I want to do further in school. Because yeah. actually I wanted to be a police officer. I started taking courses for it, believe it or not. Yeah. That's what I wanted to be my whole life since I was 16 years old. Yes. Um, anyways, that was in his plan. So I applied all, all these places at the Eaton Center, all these retail, beautiful stores and shops. And I wasn't getting anything. And then the Lord said to me, okay, you finished? Yes, because I want you to go sit in that food court over there. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I sat down at the table. I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm like, okay. Then I had a woman come up in front of me, sat down in front of me and asked me, do you need a job? I said, yes. She hired me on the spot, but it was for fast food. <laughs> it was for a fast food hammer. Uh, and I'm like, okay, Lord, humble. Humility. He brings us to a place yeah. of humility. Yeah. I was but, just going but, to say that he was training oh, you for something. Oh, yes, he was. But he's also training me for my future. Yes. So I end up working in Toronto, downtown, um, at uh, an A&W. And that is where I met my husband. He had a restaurant beside it. And then from there on, everything just fell into place. But it was a blessing while I was there because uh, the Holy Spirit just attracted people to come and, and buy from where I was working. And they never had that many people ever come by, come shop there, I mean, purchase food from there. They couldn't believe it. So it was the spirit of giving that favor, which brought interest to my husband at the time. Like, what's going on here? Yeah. So... The so, smile, the glory, the glory. Yeah, it just brought, it just changed. God was Everything with you was and you prospered wherever you went. I prospered wherever I, I went. I mean, it's so, the story can go on. It's a very long story. But 
I'm trying to put it all into one little nutshell, yeah. but that's how I met my husband. And from there, we got married. Uh, he was Catholic. You know, he was not a uh, uh, Pentecostal background. Mm -hmm. um, but we still mar we married. And we had um, two sons. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't until I was in my 30s that um, the Lord grabbed a hold of me. And it was in 2003. I, I was loving the Lord, still talking to the Lord, but I wasn't full, fully devoted in the sense of a relationship where I was assignment focused on him and making him my all. Yeah. I, I would pray to the Lord, but I wasn't giving him 100% of me. And um, it wasn't until then when the Lord just grabbed me and started giving me these visions and these dreams of end times. I mean, I wasn't reading my Bible, but I was quoting scriptures in the, my dreams, you know, and I speak to my mother about it and she was just floored because she knew I was not reading my Bible a lot, but, uh, and it was just right from the word of God. Mm -hmm. And he just shook me and I turned my whole life and rededicated myself completely to him mm -hmm. from there and everything just spiraled from there. Yes. And then from there, um, uh, around my birthday, I decided I was going to start going to church. And I told my husband at the time that I am going to church. The gift to me, and the Lord led me to a church. And from there, you know, I just uh, followed his lead on all kinds of things that he gave me, Holy Spirit, to touch people's lives. And it birthed me back into painting again, because at one point in time, I stopped painting. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wasn't into my artwork at all. I was so driven on work. Uh, family mm -hmm. um, I put it aside uh, and because of some pain that I had in my life losing loved ones that died mm -hmm. uh, that were very close to me it put something in me that I just didn't want to do it yeah now uh, when you had your things. own children maybe the old memories yeah. came up yeah yeah but it was an outlet for me and I got always used that and my one painting I did I, I did this one painting and it was all um it's a woman with the butterflies. She's holding up a bowl of butterflies in the red gown. And I painted that just from the soul of my heart. It was nothing of knowing of any of my of the Jewish background because I didn't know of my Jewish background. Mm -hmm. This poor Lord poured this out of me and I just painted this. And it wasn't until then I learned of my Jewish heritage on my father's side. That, wow. You know, it, well, he didn't know. Yes. So, um, so the Lord didn't only paint through you, but yes. he gave, gave yeah. you revelations. Yes, deep revelations. And um, I mean, it's a whole long, another story about how mm. like, he brought me to the, the synagogue. Um, but when I got to that synagogue, the Messianic synagogue, I walked in there and I sat down and I'm listening. And it was just a small little place. There's so much love in this little place. There's so much joy and love and accept. Just I, I just loved the, the humility, the humbleness of the people that were there. Mm. But in my heart, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. He says, "You're home. You're home." I'm like, "Oh, what's that? Where I'm home?" So I ended up talking to the rabbi's wife mm. later, and I said to her, "You know, I heard my spirit that I'm home," and her face lit up. And she says, you know what my prayer is? When a Jew comes here, that they hear in their heart that they're home. Amen. I thought, it's beautiful. <laughs> so my, my heart filled with joy every time I think of it. Yeah. But she says, yeah, she goes, you know, because you don't have to tell me, because I know looking at you that you are. And I've had this with all kinds of Jewish people, mm -hmm. which was so interesting. Um, they would meet me even before I knew anything. I was in my younger years. And this one lady said to me, you're Jewish. I said, no, I'm not. Mm. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and, you weren't and said, ready to hear it back then yet? No, I was in my 20s. And, and I, I would always hear it. And it wasn't until and my girlfriend. She said, why don't you look at your heritage? I looked up everything else because mm. when I was younger, I felt like I didn't know who I was. There was yeah. something missing. Mm -hmm. my background because I always my brother and I always looked different we were like darker you know but just yeah I, I were we Italian you know I always try to look up the Italian see if there's an Italian background because I felt like I was missing something and that's what I was missing 
Now you, you know, now you find the peace. Yeah, I find the peace now, and that's through my art. And from that, that's when it all exploded. And the prophetic, I can look at the Bible and pictures start forming in my mind, and then I paint them. I don't try to figure them out or try to understand them. The Lord just puts it into my heart. And there's so many things I've painted I didn't understand, but it, spoke, it speaks to the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. It speaks to those that, um, in different ways. The Holy Spirit, it's, it's, the message is in the eye of the beholder. So I just listen to what he tells me. I put uh, whatever be a shafar here or there. I do not try to think it. The minute I try to think it, nothing goes right. Nothing. Yeah. And nothing falls into place. And I was just getting this message that, you know, through your art, you and God are speaking to many people in a way that we can't, we or they can't um, rationally understand. And because it doesn't, yeah. and because it doesn't comprehend, yeah. So, and because it, do, it is not based on words, there is something, a deeper, deeper message yeah. than it goes beyond words that is deeper. Yes. And more supernatural. Yes. And, yes. Because yeah. he wants me to reveal him. That's, that's what he says yeah. that you to do. You're to reveal me to that. Because we can't un Listen. comprehend him with our rational mind. With our that's little right. rational yeah. mind, it's impossible. Yes. And so it's to reveal him. But, you know, the, the, the natural realm, the supernatural realm is more real than the natural realm. Mm -hmm. It's just a veil. Mm -hmm. It's a we are and, living in a place yeah. that, that's why our minds, we, we're only used to what we have, what's around us. Mm -hmm. And anything beyond that, it scares people to know that. Mm -hmm. Because they often but feel we, they don't have control over it. That's right. And yeah. to let know that God is in control, but this is a training ground. This is where we are in refinement. This is mm -hmm. where we are learning and become more like Yeshua, to so become more like him. And to more love like him. This is not about us. This is not about building our wealth here on this earth. This is about purifying who we are in him, our souls, our hearts, to be more like him. Mm -hmm. This is the that's why he said our treasures are not to be here, to be with him. Our treasures are not on this earth, they're in, in heaven. And he wants to make us more like him. And so we go through these things. But our eyes need to be focused on him and not the things of this world not the things of this world because there's no power in them there's, there's no there's no life in it everything is going to decay yeah our eternal life is so important to the lord it's so important to him and this and, is what we're learning and regarding your artwork how do people mm -hmm. get exposure to your artwork um how do you distribute and share your art um well Everything's been a slow process, believe it or not. But I, for the past few years, I've been in the States and um, was touring um, with concerts. What's going on? Sorry. With concerts. And I would um, paint on stage while music is playing. And then I would give a prophetic word. And then I would have prints later on for people to have them. Um, so I distributed it that way. Um, there is a plan of having a website I've been working on. So where people can buy prints and that, uh, they contact me, they can still get them right now, but I want to make flags and I want to make Shabbat blankets. We call Shabbat, uh, smart that you just wrap yourself up in that and you take time with the Lord and you rest in that comfort. So something in my heart, I really wanted to do because, uh, time with the Lord is so important. And the comfort, you know, I always think of a blanket as love, the banner over us, you know, that love of him. Uh, so that's something I want to do uh, with my work that people can have. Um, so it's in the progress. Uh, they can still get them through me. Uh, and there's original art. So I still want to do an art show. I have so many original pieces of work that have not fully been seen. Um, I haven't sold uh, a lot of the prophetic ones, and the reason being is because um, I put my artwork is owned by the Lord. I don't do it for gain, for wealth. So 
what he asked, whatever he asked me to do with them, I will do. If I am to give it to someone, I will give it. That's how I work with him. It's just, I, I just obey. Mm. And we sell it. But I know they are meant to be seen. So there's time for an art show because people need to see them physically. I've had one art show before where people, uh, a different reaction, but people cried. Um, it just touched each person different, each different piece. So it ministers. It's a ministering um, tool to people um, in a greater way that I don't even see myself sometimes. I, I, until I see people look at them, it's, it's just, I, I'm in awe of what the Lord does, really. And he will do it. And we obey and just walk in obedience. You know, give our gifts, give our talents, give everything to him. Mm. It's, you know, once we do that, you'll watch and see what the Lord does in your life. Yes. That's all I ask. I really hope to be standing in front of one of such art piece of art one day. <laughs> Yes, I and I will you. speak it, speak life. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I made prints because I want everybody to have a print, have something. Not everybody can afford, uh, mm. you know, to have original works of art. But I don't believe the Lord tells you that the prophetic pieces are meant to be hidden mm. in someone's house right now. They're meant to be seen. Mm. So until each so that phase is done, where that picture is okay, it's, it's seen, then I, I can probably sell it and move on with it. Um, but that's where I'm at right now when it comes to the artwork. Yeah, I just listen to what he tells me right now, and I go with each season. Yes. But a time season is coming where um, they will be able to just buy them fully. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, uh, right now, the season is not there. Yeah. I was just getting the image of me standing in your exhibition or somewhere, and I was like, how can I get to Canada to an art exhibition? But it would be an awesome experience. But according to God's well, ways and God's timings, He has everything mm -hmm. under control. And uh, and um, well, I may be in Finland one day, so you never know. I'm who knows? Things, right? Who knows? Call me to the nations. He says, "I call you to the nations." So, yeah. North, south, east, and west. Yeah. So, the, yes. You know the. Um, uh, the analytical and rigid fiends would definitely benefit from from this kind of mm -hmm. art to be touched by the Lord in a different way. So, yeah, and it's, uh, it's about the love of Yeshua. It's all about the love of Yeshua, yeah. showing him his love, that people just to know that love, that pure love. And that's what he instilled upon my heart, is to love on people and to know him, mm -hmm. to know that and gravitate to that. And even many people don't, somehow even though they analytically, rationally maybe know that God loves them, but often mm -hmm. through this kind of uh, artistic ways that goes beyond that is a, like a visceral way of accessing people's hearts. They can maybe mm -hmm. feel that love in a different way and more profound way. Well, because um, people are visual a lot of times, they're yeah. visual. Mm -hmm. Yes. So... Yes. Before we start wrapping up this beautiful conversation, I have a couple of questions, if you allow. Yeah, yeah. So my first question is about assignment. I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, many of, many of us, we are looking at our life purpose and we want to know what our purpose is and what is our destiny, destiny with God and what is our assignment. And since you have been walking in your ass assignment such a long time and you actually already got in touch with it early, early on, even, mm -hmm. on, even though you then uh, later you departed from it a little bit or took distance, but then you came back to it. So what would you say uh, uh, to people how, how they can become aware of their assignment that the Lord has for them? Well, the first thing of assignment is um, acknowledging the Lord as your Lord, Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. And making sure your heart just pure before Him. And to surrender everything that's in you to His will. That you will follow Him. And that's the number one thing He wants. He wants a heart that is surrendered and ready to walk into obedience. 
uh, and give him the reins. Let him, you know, direct your direct your path. And uh, by doing that and seeking him every day, whether you know we you know, pray in the morning, pray uh, when you wake up, just acknowledging him in prayer, no matter what you're doing, reading your words, seeking him because you want to know him, you want that relationship with him, and you want to know your purpose for his, for your life. He will show you. He will definitely show you and lead you in your assignment, but he wants all of you. He wants all of you. He wants you to trust him and follow him and love him. He loves you. He loves you. He's got a great plan, great plan for your life. And you don't need to be standing again around in front of thousands of people to make a great impact for the kingdom of God. It's right where you are. You bloom right where you are because the people around you need it. Your neighbors, your family, the person that you, the stranger in the supermarket, wherever you're working, you're so valuable to God. Mm. So don't ever think that you are, your life is very minuscule and has no impact. And one day you're going to find out when you reach and stand in front of the Lord and you're going to see these people and say, you know, you touched my life. Not even knowing it, that you touched that person's life. Mm. So just be who you are, what God created you to be. We all can't be taxi drivers. We all can't be doctors. Mm. We all can't be movie stars. What would this world be? Mm. I mean, God needs each and every one of you. He created the plan for you. right before you even existed. He knew your plan from the beginning to the end. Mm. It's already done. It's already accomplished. You've done this, but you've got every day just keep trusting him and believing that he's got that great plan for you. Amen. And then it is very, my next question is very closely related to the previous one. And uh, you had, as uh, you have been sharing how you, you were just a little girl and you already started to talk to, talking to him and listening to him. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. was your friend and you, you saw him everywhere and you felt him and you mm -hmm. were walking with him and you continue doing it now as well. And uh, so what would you uh, recommend to, to people um, how they could practice this kind of, you know, fellowshipping with the Lord um, every day and, and developing this close relationship with him so that they can hear him, so that they can obey him and surrender, uh, surrender to him when they are maybe no, not, not so practiced in that, or maybe they are busy in their daily life and still, you know, mm -hmm. families, children, jobs, whatever responsibilities mm -hmm. they have. So what would you recommend then to, to do in their everyday life to, 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 uh, to develop this when they don't have hours to sit in prayer in a, in a prayer room? Well, with me, God's always on my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I think about him always. Right? He's always on my thoughts. So it's not about, um, I know, so when I had children, it, it, I mean, we don't, have the time our mind's so busy with little ones running around and, and, and our schedules but our time can be upon waking the acknowledgement of him you're thinking of him because he's thinking of you i mean i i would talk to him i don't i didn't have to be on my knees for three hours to have the relationship with him if i'm washing dishes i'm talking to him my heart your heart is always communing it's about building a relationship it's like with our spouse we don't just spend three hours with them and say, okay, I'm done with you for the rest of the day. I will not communicate with you. <laughs> we can think of it that way, right? <laughs> what do we do with our spouse? We do communicate with them. All with the phone call, by, you know, throughout the day, can you get this? This is to treat Yeshua like this, God like this. Yes. That he is part of your life in your relation. That he's not just a certain time. Mm -hmm. If you can't make an hour time. But at nighttime, you know, before, when you go to bed, make, make your time that you try. I mean, we can make time. There's no such thing. We cannot say we cannot make time because that, that is a lie. We can make time to watch TV for two hours, three hours. So we got to look about what, what we need to remove, you know. We can make 15 minutes of our own time alone. But the minute you start giving, your, giving God time, you'll see different things manifest in your life. 
And you can't take anything as not a, nothing's a coincidence. If you have a butterfly that can fly, I mean, Lawrence used it with your butterflies all the time. And I was thinking his touch, his love touches. Your heart needs to be open to receive those kind of things. He's going to show you things. He's going to bless you with little things. He's, he, he's going to woo on you when you, when you go to seek him and things, seek him. Just keep seeking him with the innocence of your heart. All he wants is your heart. And when you come to him with a pure and humble heart, he honors that. And he loves that. He loves that you want to know him and love him. But you don't have to make it a religious act of three hours. You time it and you make it. Well, I read my Bible right now and I do this. No, it has to be this love and this want in your heart to know him mm. and have that relationship with him. And just carry him throughout your day like you would your spouse, your loved one. How you think upon your loved one when you think of him. You know, and your children. Think of the Lord and incorporate him into that, mm. into that family, into your life. It's part of your way of thinking. That is so great because I have noticed that sometimes when I really take this time off, for example, first thing in the morning when I have my long time with him, which I love, mm -hmm. but sometimes I kind of struggle do with it in a way that I think I should be doing. But then I noticed mm. that when I when I do some everyday life, everyday things like washing dishes or mm. something, then I then I get get messages and things flow much better. And especially um, immediately after I have woken up, when I I don't move, I just stay with the eyes closed and start thinking about him and maybe. Mm -hmm. speaking in tongues in my mind but not opening mm -hmm. my mouth not speaking out loud I absolutely start feeling his presence and often that is for me much easier to connect with him than doing certain things so um, I mm -hmm. love what you are sharing that we get to choose how we how we do it and uh, yeah. and sometimes also when I when I uh, try to pray in a certain way especially mm -hmm. in the morning before I go to work, my thoughts leap to my work things. I start thinking about work already and then I try to fight mm -hmm. it. Don't think about Jesus, think about God. But then what I have done is to, okay, I allow myself to think about work because that is also my service to God. But then I take mm -hmm. Jesus with me. I think like yes. if I think I think about a meeting, I think about something I need to do, do something urgent or something uh, uh, mm -hmm. important. Uh, then I and I can't get it out of my mind in that moment. Mm -hmm. I just invite Jesus to come with me, and uh, yes, he comes with you. He's with yes. you. So th yeah. thank you so a much. Guilt's not from God. Guilt's not from God. Yeah. So we put, Amen. we put restrictions. We put restrictions on our relationship with them. Yeah. So have that freedom. Amen. Yeah. Do you? Uh, yeah. We are going to wrap up in a yeah. in a minute. Uh, is there a final message on your heart that you would like to share with everyone um, watching? Is there something that the Holy Spirit wants to say through you? What I hear in my heart right now is love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul because he loves you. And he wants you just, to, he wants all of you. And, you know, don't let guilt ever keep you. Don't ever let shame ever keep you from going to him. He loves you with an undying love. He's got a perfect plan for your life. Go to him. And don't let anything keep you from having that relationship with him. He loves you. Loves you. Make it an absolute priority. Amen. Yes, it does. Thank you, sister. And Amen. Blessings to you. Thank My you for pleasure. sharing your blessings. story. And everyone Thank watching you. this, check out Hadassah's link uh, beneath. And um, I would love to, whenever also your art-related website is ready, uh, yes. I would love to share your uh, link there as well. But uh, of course, we are always with God's timing. Whenever it is God's yes. timing to share that, we will share that. So you can go and yes. check that out as well. And thank you, everyone watching. Blessings you. to you. And we will be back yes. in a week with the next testimony. Blessings, everyone. Blessings. <laughs> Bye-bye.